Brexit has deeply divided Britain. The fact that the topic of stimulus has recently calmed down is not only due to the corona crisis. Rather, Lisa Nandy, who is responsible for foreign policy in the shadow cabinet of the opposition Labour Party, does not give the impression that she wants to rekindle the issue. The government should fulfill its election promise and by the end of the Brexit transition period at the end of the year submit a free trade agreement that will ensure trade without tariffs and quotas, said Nandy in a video interview with the NZZ and other international media. The sober tones are no accident. Since the new Labour leader Keir Starmer succeeded Jeremy Corbyn in April, the party has been avoiding Brexit for the time being. This strategy stems from a real political insight. Leaving the EU has been a fact since the end of January. And after the electoral defeat in December, Labour has little opportunity to influence the course of Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his comfortable parliamentary majority in the negotiations with Brussels. With Brexit always dividing the Labour Party in two, reluctance also has a tactical touch. Nandy once voted in favour of remaining in the EU, but now stresses that the party should not be involved in hopeless battles or internal trench warfare. We were smashed in the elections because of Brexit, says Nandy. After more than a decade in the opposition, we have to stand together and turn the fire towards the outside. It has only recently been shown that the internal dispute can break out at any time. To the outrage of the left wing, Starmer released long-standing Corbyn ally Rebecca Long-Bailey from the shadow cabinet because she had spread an interview on Twitter that suggested a kind of connection between the Israeli secret service, the Mossad, and the death of George Floyd in the United States. After his election, Starmer announced that he would be zero tolerant of the anti-Semitism that was rampant under Corbyn. The 40-year-old Nandy cannot be clearly assigned to any party wing, which is why The Guardian recently described her as a refreshingly unrivaled. Rather, she's considered an intelligent and down-to-earth politician who knows the realities outside the metropolis of London. In the lower house, the mother of a five-year-old son represents the constituency of Wigan from the Manchester region. She has a sensorium for the population in the former industrial areas in Northern England, most of whom voted for Brexit in 2016 and, for the first time in generations, voted for the Conservatives instead of Labour in the 2019 election. Thanks to the promise to implement Brexit and invest in disadvantaged regions, Boris Johnson smashed the red wall of these traditional Labour strongholds. An internal analysis of the election debacle shows gloomy future prospects for the Labour Party, which would have to win 124 seats in Parliament and overcome its low in Scotland in order to regain power in 2024. According to the analysis, Corbyn's unpopularity, doubts about the feasibility of the radical election program and the ambivalent stance on Brexit have mutually increased a snowball effect and led to the worst Labour election result since 1935. As a structural problem, the authors of the report cite that the long crumbling Labour voter coalition between the EU skeptical working class in old industrial areas and EU friendly left wing liberals in the big cities has now broken down for the first time in 2019. The two parts of our coalition of voters experience globalization in opposite ways. That is how Nandy describes the problem that many social democratic parties are struggling with under different national conditions. But the German Social Democrats have the same problems, kind of, at the moment. Labour now accuses the government of wanting to launch another cultural struggle to distract from the corona crisis, although Labour does not want to be scared of Fenugreek. The government's plans not to allow transsexuals to make a simplified change to their birth certificates are confirmed by Nandy, who says that it is important to strike a balance between cis women's fears and transsexual rights. But to be honest, even the existence of this term cis women, cis men, is discriminating. You are a man or you are a woman, no matter with whatever sex you've been born. The only thing that matters is your identity. And then you are a man or you are a woman, not you are a cis man or a transsexual man. The Labour leadership is also careful with the Black Lives Matter protests. When the statue of slave trader Edward Colston fell in Bristol, Starmer explained that the monument should have been removed democratically and not by force. A position that was too tame from the Corbyn wing's point of view, but in the former Labour strongholds in Northern England could meet with approval. Similarly diplomatic is Nandy, who, as the daughter of an Indian father and an English mother, knows about the complex heritage of the empire due to her own family history. Instead of overturning old statues, Nandy 
has successfully worked in her hometown of Wigan to build memorials for new heroes like dark-skinned rugby legend Billy Boston. It is still unclear with which program the new Labour leadership wants to regain trust and merge its divided electoral base. It is currently benefiting from the government's declining popularity due to the failures in the corona crisis. Unemployment and the recession will soon be at the center of the debate. In the coastal towns and old industrial areas, people didn't realize how bad the slump will be. That's what Nandy says. We cannot wait for government errors. We have to help improve the living conditions of the population. Johnson has announced that, despite the impending record deficits, he does not want to go on an austerity course and continues to invest in disadvantaged regions. The more Johnson relies on social democratic recipes in the corona recession, the more difficult he will make the job for Labour. And the whole video sounded quite positive for Labour, I guess. And there I have to emphasize something. I'm a German conservative politician myself. And that I have to talk about Labour that positively compared to the conservative government should tell you a lot. But if you now want to know more about European politics from a German point of view, I put my next video right here in the end screen, right next to your chance to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Anyway, I'll see you in my next video. Click and enjoy. Viel Spaß.